it's another flight level special. And I'm super excited for this one. Again, a little bit selfish of me because I always wanted to talk with Marcus about flight levels and scaling uh, agility inside of the organization, about flight levels and safe, and also about flight levels coaching program. So maybe Marcus, before we just jump into the main topics of the conversation, could you just introduce yourself to people who don't know you yet? <laughs> well, thank you very much, Justina. So I'm very glad to be here. Uh, yeah, my name is Markus Brandl. I'm a flight level guide, actually, and part of the Flight Level Academy as a management partner. And yeah, as you said, so the topic might be around flight levels and safe. So I spend a lot of time, actually, on safe implementations. And uh, yeah, I'm very happy to share, actually, what we've done there and uh, how you can um, utilize flight levels, which mm -hmm. in such a space. Yeah. So what, what brought you from this safe space into flight levels? What was your moment that you decided, okay, mm -hmm. that's the direction I'm going to go? Mm -hmm. So the problem was actually that um, my feeling was that most of safe implementations were imposed to the people. So it was like, so I think there is nothing wrong with the framework. So it's just a, let's mm. say a box of possibilities. But what I've seen is that um, people weren't in, um, let's say, weren't part of the design. Um, of the change um, and they weren't in lead of the change. So it was imposed um, rather to multi departments, to companies. And uh, I, I was searching actually for better ways uh, to introduce change um, within organizations. Yeah. And why do you think it is that so often people who are affected by the change <laughs> are not mm -hmm. on the steering team or the designing team? Why, why is that? So that's a very good question. I don't know the why actually, um, but I think it's actually not very smart to not um, let them participate in the change because what you're looking for is uh, actually not, not to change the people, not to change the work system, rather activate the work system. So I always believe that everything a company needs is already in place. Um, and the question is how we can activate it. And uh, so in my past, I unfortunately see that how SAFE was introduced um, wasn't capable to really activate people. Um, and to yeah, bring the desired uh, changes in the right direction. Mm -hmm. But why do you think it was not able to activate people and bring those desired mm -hmm. changes? Mm -hmm. I think a big part was that, um, so for me, introducing SAFE is like uh, buying a bit technology platform. You know, you have to spend time, <laughs> you know, no, it's, it's, it's really like you have to spend time in gaining knowledge and understanding what are your options. Mm -hmm. And so people have to learn and that people have to have the time to experience if those working methods are actually working for them. So I, I think like, um, yeah, the, the expectation is that if you just simply learn about the topic of safe, that you, you're gaining capabilities. But I think that's not the case. And so I think that is the reason why safe only rarely activates, because um, it's more like implementing theory rather than and gaining capabilities. So I think mm -hmm. agility for me is a capability. So it's, it's nothing for me, it has nothing to do with, with knowledge or, um, or wisdom. It's, it's rather like, um, mm -hmm. it's like how fast I can run. So I have to practice. And I think when most companies, they go towards safe, they don't practice. Yeah. Mm. And you know, it's amazing. Like you just brought like another beautiful metaphor that the agility is like kind of practicing how fast can you run. And I also had recently the conversation with Alisa Strubele and we had another metaphor. We said like flight levels, it's like cooking with spices. It doesn't matter which kind of dish you are cooking. Once you add like the spice, it will just become better. So yeah, I think that we should make like the collection of flight levels uh, metaphor. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if Klaus will be such a fan of it, but uh, uh, definitely we'll have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. But if we could just come back to safe uh, again, mm -hmm. how do you think flight levels can play together with safe in order to bring the business agility and the capabilities into organization? Mm -hmm. I think within SAFE, actually, so if, if you strip out the big picture of SAFE, um, you will basically, you will see flight level elements. So if, if you okay. look very closely, you can see one flight level one, two, and three systems. Um, but I think, so what, what I typically did in the past is um, those kind of systems, like a portfolio Kanban or a program Kanban, 
Um, so rather than just taking those kind of visualizations and apply it to people, um, I had a very, uh, actually a, a very good experience with letting the people design those kind of working systems. So about what topics they would like to coordinate around. And uh, so I think this, this can really leverage um, going towards safe. So this is for me, is like the first step um, to bring the people into the center um, of, of the change or actually to, to activate them. Mm -hmm. And like when you walk into the organization and, you know, a lot of people have some resistance when they hear the word change, uh, agile transformation, transformation, safe scaling, things like that. Do you come across a similar resistance when you bring flight levels or it plays a little bit differently because actually you start where you are with them? Mm -hmm. Um, so what I typically do, I uh, don't talk about flight levels. <laughs> I, tr I try to let the people experience. Mm -hmm. um, I, I try to provide some kind of framing so that the people can perform real work. And I think this, from my point of view, is another problem. That So I got the feeling that agility is becoming more and more a problem rather than providing real solutions. Mm -hmm. And I got the feeling that we have to go back. So to do real work and to do work which improves our working system. So in like in a way we as a group believe in that these are good improvements. And I think resistance come from if I'm not part of um, any kind of uh, system improvement activities. So if, if I don't have any stakes in design possibilities um, and if I don't have, um, let's say, the, the opinion or the option to opt out, to say, no, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, flight level is so open that you always have the freedom to say either I'm going to be part of the new work system design Yeah. Um, or if, if I don't like it at all, I don't have to participate. So um, as I guess Siggy would say, it's, it's about, or John Cotter, it's about work with the willing. And to also give them the power and the authority and to execute what they think would really make sense for the company. And I think this is, um, from my point of view, one of the biggest benefits because this is how to activate. I mean, mm -hmm. companies are you know they they pay people to work with them they have uh, they have this knowledgeable workers that <laughs> yes. like the, the, the best people in the company but then they tell them um, how they should work and this for me personally doesn't make any sense so if you want to real have a real scale mm -hmm. um, and become really fast uh, then i think this is um or this might be a way to go mm -hmm. and do you do you remember like your first experience when you brought uh, flight levels into your tool set and walk into the organization? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me it was, or I think especially for the participants, it was very eye-opening because it was like, okay, suddenly now we can design it. It's it's like um, now it's in our hand. We, we don't need, yeah, we can start with whatever Kanban templates and so on, but um, now we can decide about the agile interactions, how often we want to meet, what are the topics. Um, And I think this is where frameworks might be a bit too too precise mm. and they might give too much guidance. So uh, I, I guess like flight levels isn't a framework, it's a thinking model. So you have to think. So there mm. was this, this great quote at the um, flight level day where I guess uh, Jose said that, um, I think that's also another quote, that agility don't have a brain, so you have to bring your own. <laughs> yeah. and, and I think, and I really like it really resonates with me because I think that is the point. Um, mm. And a lot of people, they have really good brains and they want to participate. They want to be part of it, but unfortunately they can't. Yeah. And I think another big thing is um, the unclarified topic of sponsorship. So mm. um, let's say within the world of flight levels, we try to identify like within the first steps, do we have enough authority? Do we have like top leaders, a uh, top leader sponsorship? Um, so that the, the people who come up with new ideas and want to design new kind of working systems, that they also have the authority and um, to execute these findings. And I think this is, a, is, is another common pattern with, it, I wouldn't call it safe, uh, failed safe transformation, but transformation which um, only work on paper. You know, like you design yeah. these fancy kind of systems and you present those slides to someone and they say, yeah, it's great. And when it comes to, okay, now it's the point we really need to do it, then suddenly it's like, no. Um, mm -hmm. We're not going to do it. And yeah. so, yeah, very early sponsorship. I think that's a, a big or important topic. 
But you know, I, I agree with you like with 100 and even 200 percent because I remember so many times when I asked the team how they want to design their system. They're like, why are you are asking us? You, 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 you tell us, we will follow. Like no one ever yeah. asked us, you know? And then you are terrified because I used to work like in software development companies, you know, in the digital space. So bright, intelligent, ingenious, problem solvers. And then they are like, oh, why are you are asking us? They are just not used to that someone actually cares about their opinion, how their days should look like. So yeah, it's, it, it's terrifying. So it was also like for me, I think the aha moment with the flight levels as, as a concept, that it's a thinking model. Mm, so okay. I definitely agree with you. Okay, and now could you just tell us a little bit more about the role of the flight levels coach and the role of the flight levels guide? What would those two mean? Mm -hmm. So for me, the flight level coach, I have to say this was my most comprehensive journey. Um, <laughs> like why? I, I would why? say... Why? Uh, why? Yeah, because I think it, it's like the real end-to-end -end view towards coaching and consulting. Mm -hmm. And there I also learned like what is the, the difference between coaching and consulting and that you need both elements actually. And I think this is very interesting. So sometimes it's not, it's not about uh, providing all the time solutions, but it's sometimes um, people need your expertise. They need to, you know, to give them a few options um, in, in a space of very, um, very high unclarity. But uh, so this is for me, it's like a back and forth. So sometimes it's, it's more like in, in the coaching direction. And sometimes it's more in, into consulting. Um, so, but always, I guess, Siggy, I would like to quote Siggy, leave the problem and the solution with the people. Mm. So it's, it's, it's just like, you know, giving them a few thoughts um, rather than des describing what they should do now. And this is what I basically learned in the coach program. And I learned actually what is the importance of flight level system architecture, like in the overall concept. Um, so that this is, I would say, probably also the most comprehensive way to identify value within organizations. Mm -hmm. So I haven't seen anything better um, than the FLSA and to, to identify um, value adding activities or like where does value flow around within your organization um, without having the need to implement everything mm -hmm. afterwards. Um, and then, of course, in the FLC to learn how to build a real flight level systems. So to bring all the things together, like from a contracting point of view, like the, the change part, the sponsoring over the change flow, um, how you can you know come up with, with some kind of change flow activities because just running a flight level workshop, um, like from my point of view in an in-house context has almost no value. Mm -hmm. And you, you have to think it like within change sequences or like change activities where you say, okay, this is one change loop we want to go. And like, this is the expected outcome. So we try to start with the end in mind and then think backward. So for me, the FLC is, is about end to end, um, how to design good uh, change activities with the people um, involved in the system, how to ensure that we have the sponsorship we need to execute this kind of change activities and um, how to identify value adding activities to having options to design flight level systems, which can make a real difference. And of course, to be able to design flight level one, two and three systems. So this is why I would call it comprehensive. So it covers everything like on a change and a system mm -hmm. perspective, I would say, which is required nowadays. And how did it work for you? Because actually the whole coaching program takes a few months. Mm. Do you think that uh, it's, actually place for the benefits for the for the participants or it creates some challenges for them yeah so if, uh, i guess if we look at the amount of how much knowledge is transferred within this few months and how much you practice i would say it's it's only a, a bit of knowledge but you know like um the knowledge is connected in a very smart way so what you do basically like it is i don't know how many 20 sessions or so you practice so you gain capability and I had the feeling after I stepped out of the FLC, I have the capability and to go into organizations and um, to really support a big change activities. So um, with all the questions I have previously in mind, so should we just train the people? Should we tell them how to do it now? Suddenly for me, it was like, um, I understood like, okay, this is how you connect. And now I feel mm -hmm. much more secure because I practice it a lot. So. Mm -hmm. um, this was the FLC. Okay. And then if you look at your position as a flight level guide, what flight level guide brings into the organization? Mm -hmm. 
I think the flight level guide, but also the flight level coach um, brings into organization that um, especially the guide, I mean, he's capable to give the flight level training. So FLSA or workshops, FLSA, flight level two and three design. And for me, th these people are like, um, I would call it replicators. So they can help companies and organizations um, to gain capabilities for mm -hmm. the people that they can start to think in value adding activities and how value is connected in their organization. So we had this topic also on the FLD day. Um, and uh, I guess also so, uh, Jose said that once you've seen a flight level system architecture, you can't unsee it. <laughs> yes. And and I think this is, uh, from my point of view, this is one of the capabilities which is the most important for management. Mm. I mean, of course, you, you can do all this kind of project activities and, I don't know, come up with resource calculation. But I think the more interesting question is how we can build up communication and coordination um, around um, the topics we want to achieve progress in. Mm -hmm. And so this is where the flight level guide for me actually could make a real difference so a lot of companies they're inviting their people to let them experience how flight level system architecture work and this is something um, where a guide uh, could facilitate but you know that's that's so much true because i remember the first time i learned about systems thinking i could not stop the, seeing systems everywhere then when i met klaus i learned about flight levels I could not stop seeing, you know, flight levels, even as you said, even if people don't call it, whenever you work into, walk into organization, there is always the flight level system. There's always some kind of coordination. So yeah, that's, that's so much true, but maybe we could extend it a little bit because you said mm -hmm. about uh, flight level system architecture. Can you tell a few more details? What is this uh, class about and what, what is the value that it brings for the attendees? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, again, another quote from the FLD from Kulavan. <laughs> and, and, his, and his colleague, they said, I, I can remember pretty good because it resonates so much. They said, like, this is the X-ray of an organization. And uh, I really think it is because so typically organization, when they grow, they tend to come up with more formal structure. They need, I don't know, governance and whatever, clarity of formal authority and all this stuff. But they tend to lose, um, and it's also what Kotter describes, that they tend to lose um, their side on how value creation works for them. Mm. And so they build up on top with more, I don't know, Scrum, Spotify, whatever things, and OKRs and all this stuff. And suddenly, um, you know, it's always about changing the, the structural parts. But the FLSA could help you actually to do an X-ray of your organization and to really show um, where you would have potential uh, or where you would have potential um, to gain coordination around value generating topics or about topics mm -hmm. um, which are big challenges for you. So the FLSA could help you to identify potential flight level systems um, like with the current state of the organization or part of the organization. I think this is also important to mention. So it's not always about doing a flight level system architecture for the whole organization. Rather, you could also do it for parts. And so... Yeah, it's, it's about gaining options in a complex world. Mm -hmm. And those yeah. options are um, identify potential um, coordination systems mm -hmm. and the inter interrelations between those systems. Yeah, I, I, it definitely also resonates with me as well, because I remember when I took uh, flat level system architecture classes with Klaus in London a few years ago, and I was thinking, wow, it just removes all of the noise because you walk into the organization, they have so many artifacts you know so many meetings you know thousands of things that are happening but when it comes for the essence the most important things it, you just don't know what is happening anymore and you just have to bring the clarity and for me actually the having the architecture in the head it helps to bring that clarity so yeah x-ray for 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 it it's a great a great metaphor and and I think you you can start right away. You know there is no need to have a lot of upfront preparation, all that stuff. It's really like okay, this is your organization. Now let's figure out um, what where you can leverage your uh, coordination or where you have potential flight limit systems. So. Yeah, yeah, indeed, indeed. Okay, Mark. So is there anything else that you would like to share with the audience? Some key messages that you think everyone should or could know about flight levels. Mm -hmm. So as I said in the beginning, from my point of view, so uh, 
actually I'm, I'm not dogmatic. So I personally, I don't care about frameworks. What I care about is that people, you know, are become again, the center of um, activation and the center of change activities. And I think flight level could be such a thinking model where there is always enough space for your own context. Um, and flight levels can help you actually to gain real agile capabilities. So from my point of view, flight levels is um, to, let's say, emerge your agility rather than trying to copy or blueprint. And I think agility is like people, it's individual. Every company has its own style. And um, for every company, the agility is another asset. But what I also see is that the more and more organizations you know they they need to come up with innovation like mm -hmm. in, in a faster style and i have the impression that also big frameworks might be too rigid and too slow for what is required nowadays and from my point of view like flight levels is the lightest the lightest thing to step into the world of business agility um you have to have clarity about what you can do with what and do you have if you have enough authority to execute it um, upfront, I think that's important. But when you're in it um, and you see how the people um, evolve and how the people become the center of um, activation and change activities, I think this is the smartest thing you can do. And nowadays, as a, I don't know, top level management or leader or uh, entrepreneur, because um, <laughs> You're, you know, you're activating not just one brain, you're activating hundreds of brains and hundreds of experience. And this is uh, what I think makes real great work system design and also sustainable work systems design where people want to work and uh, feel that they do a change or that they can make a change with everything they do. And I think this is the, the value from my point of view and um, what the flight levels bring. I really loved everything that you said, especially it's like emerging agility and you have to find the ways to actually activate it inside of people. So now on Monday morning, I will just look for the ways to activate it and look for the places where it emerges and help to bring it. So mm -hmm. thank you very much, Marcus, for that. I think that it was a very comprehensive overview of your journey with flight levels, of your journey with scaling using flight levels and also for some people, a bit of information on the role of the coach, guide, and what is actually inside of the flight level system architecture, because that's the class that I took, and that's the class that mm -hmm. changed also my perspective on how I see organizations. So thank you, Marcus, very much. And I wish you a wonderful, wonderful day, and a lot of journeys with flight levels, very high journeys and very successful ones. Thank you very much, Justina. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you.